Thank you so much, Rod Derps. And thank you for covering through all the tech issues uh, before the run. Luckily, one upside to having the tech issues is that we did set up the next game very, uh, almost ready to set up. So we should be ready to go for the next Resident Evil game in the block. Uh, but first, we have $20 from Robin203. ADQ is awesome. Shout outs to all the great runners. And of course, the Twitch chat. Twitch chat, can I please get some love for Robin? I think they're awesome. Quick reminder that if you donate now, you are eligible to win a bunch of prizes. Um, there is a custom Corsair PC if you do donate a total of $150, and Omega Pro Chair uh, uh, with any donation of $30, as well as a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 graphics card with a donation of $30. If any of you are looking to buy a Nintendo Switch, now's your chance. Um, unfortunately, you're going to have to win it, though. If you donate up to $50 uh, over the course of the, uh, of the marathon, you will be eligible to win a Nintendo Switch if your name is pulled. Uh, you can also win an Umbrella Corp Foam Halloween Pumpkin, as well, I'm sure you all know about Umbrella Corp and their logo and, and uh, their, the games, of course. And of course, we do have some donation incentives to, uh, to, to fill in that are coming up. Uh, for example, in Final Fantasy VII, you can choose Eris's name. Currently, Aerith is in the name, uh, or in the lead. It is a name, but it's in the lead. For $570, um, but Spoiler and Cool Ranch are not fall behind. I love the name Cool Ranch, honestly. <laughs> Uh, and Kingdom Two, uh, Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Two, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Two Final Mix. They will be singing Disney songs, and you get to choose which Disney song they sing. Currently, Mulan's "I'll Make a Man Out of You" is currently in the lead with three thousand dollars. But Gaston and A Whole New World are quite a few ways behind. So uh, if you're not a fan of Mulan, I don't know who you are, um, but you shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, and you want to hear Gaston instead, uh, try and get your donations in. Or if you want to see Mulan and you want to make sure that it gets uh, sung on stream, uh, go ahead and donate towards that. And another reminder, uh, if you are watching and you want to help out and you just don't know what incentive to give towards, uh, all, in, uh, all donations can, of course, be uh, chosen to go towards the runner's choice or the couch's choice or the announcer's choice or anything you want. If you like me and you want me, you want to support my goal, which is Mega Man X, uh, that would be great. Uh, I know a lot of, uh, I know the previous runner, Rod Derps, was uh, for Mega Man X as well. And that's coming up soon, so make sure you get the money in for that. We have $30 from Forsaken. Uh, love this event every year. Thanks for the entertainment. Looking forward to all the runs this year, and as always, kill the animals. Cade donated $10. Please read this out loud so my friend Jason will donate as well. Given to the peer pressure, Jason. An anonymous $50 says, keep up the good work. Thanks, man. I love it. Yeah.
there's still nothing from Jason. I'm starting to lose hope. All right, this is getting ridiculous. If somebody's name is Jason and you haven't donated yet, come on, come on, bro, come on. At this point, I don't even care if it's the same Jason. If your name is Jason and you have $10, just give it to us, please. I'm getting tired of waiting. This just said we have a donation, but it's not Jason. Anonymous, though, donates $30 and says, SGDQ is keeping me stress-free while packing for the first two house moves. Oh, the first of two house moves. Loved all the runs so far, and good luck to everyone. And save those darn frames. I feel you, dude. Moving houses is not easy. Not easy. We have $5 from Jason49. Because a Jason had to step up to the plate. Shame on you, the other Jason, for not donating. Can we get a round of applause for the hero of Jason? Yeah. <laughs> Kui Pies donates $12. Thank you so much for a great event and looking forward to the next Resident Evil run. Sparks SR with $50. What's up, GDQ? Loving the resi block. Can't get enough of that amazing voiceover work. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Always amazing to watch you guys smash these games. Love from the UK and donation to the announcer's choice. Uh, for any of you wondering, my choice of donation is the bonus game 2 of Mega Man X Any% Percent Buster Only. That's going to be an awesome run.
just a reminder, you guys, you are watching SJDQ 2017. And this is a great, great, great marathon. It's been going on for many, many years, raised many, many millions of dollars, and many, many people have benefited from our work here in Minneapolis. Um, we are getting started with the next run very, very shortly. Just trying to figure out a couple, 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 couple audio issues. So uh, we'll get that squared away shortly. Hopefully a little bit shorter than the first Resident Evil. <laughs> We have a $10 donation from not Jason 250. Come on, Jason, where are you at? Uh, Namarseal donates $30 and says, This donation goes to the tech crew choice. Big ups, guys. Optimistic English Gamer donated $30 and said, I'm not even called Jason. Jason needs to donate. Can we spam that in the chat? Jason needs to donate. Get him on it. Florian donates $10. Hi, my name is not Jason, but here's $10. Have a nice day. Thanks, Florian. I really needed that. A lot of people ask me how the runs are going, but they never ask how my day is. Dr. Underscore with $10. Name isn't Jason. But James is pretty close second. Let's kill those animals. Sounded quite a little bit more sadistic than intended. Whoops. Don't worry. Here at GDQ, we love to kill animals all the time. All the time, because it's faster. We have an anonymous $20 donation. And get ready, guys. I think this might be the shortest time we've ever put a meme to rest. Hey, Jason here. You got me called out, Cade, so I'm going to do a little bit better. Keep up the awesome runs. Ooh, now he just called out Cade, and Cade has to donate more money now. This is nice. I like this. Casper donates $30 and says, thank you for all your work. Go fast and amazing. Greetings from Sweden. Veronica213 donates $10. I saw that the name of the next game is Veronica X, so I just had to donate for a game with my name in it. Lucas with $10. This SGDQ has been awesome so far. I have a lot to do, but having this stream in the background makes it, makes it easier. Since we are saving lives, let's also save those frames. Game of Proxy donates $5. Hey, been did watching since 2012. Happily watching on my nights off, and as always, kill the animals. Ozman the first with $30. SGDQ is the best. Every year it keeps improving and it shows. Thanks to all the people making this event possible, you are seriously the best. The best, the best, the best. To any of you wondering, all the audio you hear going through the stream is run by Power Up Audio. It is an indie 
a sound studio from Vancouver, Canada. And they have been doing an amazing job this year. I've heard nothing but good things about the audio quality about the stream. GDQ is also partners with Fangamer. You can find them at fangamer.com. They have official merch for Undertale, Hollow Knight, Hyperlight Drifter, and more. Two Earthbound books that will absolutely not help your speedrun time, unfortunately. Um, they have uh, clothes, figurines, pins, plushies, and books. Uh, whatever you name it, just a whole bunch of fan merch. You can't go wrong there. We have $150 from Master Freak that says, raising money to help those in need and qualifying for amazing prizes from amazing sponsors? Has there ever been a better reason to give some money? I think not. Uh, Discroll donates $50. We're about to start another one here. We can pretend my name is Jason for this donation. I'll donate another 50 if somebody named Greg donates. Get on it, Greg. Don't let us down, boy. We have an upcoming donation war for Divinity Original Sin. You can choose the character name, and currently the character name in the lead is 2B, which I think is hilarious because that run was way earlier. However, that boy is right behind 2B with uh, $950. They're only about $50 behind. That's like one donation. So if you really wanna, if you really wanna kill the vibe with a really bad meme, that boy is the way to go. <laughs> we got uh, another donation from the uh, Jason Cade combo, this time coming from Cade, $40 from him. Uh, you're lucky I get paid tomorrow, Jason. Greetings from a cold Australia and keep up the fantastic work. Also, I call out everyone to donate for that sweet, sweet level one Sephiroth fight. Good choice for donation. Ryan9 with $15. Thank you, SGDQ, for keeping me awake on my graveyard shift. I can't think of anything I'd rather do than watch the runs, except maybe actually do my work. Oh, well. Put this towards killing the animals. Mac Orpheus donates $50. Good morning from the UK. Excited for Code Veronica. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. I have just received the all clear. So, without further ado, let's throw it off to the runners. On the way. For sure. All right. Are you guys ready for the countdown? I actually get that right there. Yeah. All right, on uh, go. Three, two, one, go. Yo, yo, what up, GDP? What up? Uh, pessimism, we got you guys want to do the couch, let them guys know you beautiful people are. 
Carcinogen SDA. I am Raw Derps. Barbie X Edge. Well, that's not good right there. All right, so the uh, beginning section of the game. Um, wake up in a cell. You have literally nothing except a playing manual. What this playing manual is for, we do not know yet. No, no, we do not. It's a mystery. So it can be said. The, uh, so we're picking up this knife here. The knife is... Uh, Code Veronica's knife has a uh, pretty, has a pretty uh, decent reputation as the most powerful knife in the Resident Evil series. And the reason for this is because it deals damage every frame that it connects with an enemy as opposed to uh, just slashing once and doing like 7, 10 damage or however ever much it is. And you see I have a Raga launcher in my inventory, but yeah, yeah. that will not be used. That was just, I just had it set up in the game plus. Right. That's just that that just happens to that just happens to be there. Because he uh, cleared the game with an S rank on another file. And it just like unlocks it as on the system file by default, but he is putting it away right now. So these uh, first, this first set of zombies here, just running uh, three steps. Oh, that's oh yeah. So the thing about zombies, we should probably get that out of the way right now. Yeah. Zombies are uh, zombies in this game. They have some pretty interesting move sets, and uh, they uh, they tend to they tend to cut you off a lot. So it's like. Basically, any time that we're going to say, okay, so this is how it works, the zombies are going to do exactly the opposite. That's just a fact of life with Code Veronica zombies. Um, but uh, what happened there was, uh, what happened there was normally the, the way that line works is pessimism is supposed to run three steps and then do like a sharp turn and then do like another, do like another turn to the right after passing those two. But was that a was that an instant bite or was it a uh, I wasn't I wasn't really paying instant. attention. It was an instant. Okay, yes. so zombies in this game, um, whenever they go, uh, they have they 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 tend to have they tend to have multiple states like one where they're just like uh, just like kind of shambling forward, but then there's another where they uh, gradually pick up speed or sometimes they immediately go full speed, and then they throw their arms out and when they do that then they go into a state where they where it's like pure grab frames. All they can do is just. Like all, all, you, all you can do is just like try to run the opposite direction or try to shoot them and hope that they just like hope that the hit stun is enough to like stop them. But because we have no weapons, we have no choice but to take the bite. Unfortunately. Um, also, uh, to the to the my left, we have Major Jiggin to the right, the homie Patrick Drake. Yeah, we got our. Make sure he gives those guys a shout out. Yeah, what is going on, guys? <laughs> 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 So, pretty much any time that there is a pickup where uh, Claire will bend down. That was also another insta bite. No, Zombie that, that, wasn't, that, that wasn't. That was shakable. Okay, that was shakable. If you, um, when you're picking up an item, if you press right and action at the same time, it cancels out the bend, the bending over animation, so it saves time. It saves about, I'd say, 0.75 seconds every pickup. But the reason I, I didn't try it on like the or excuse me, flamethrower, the extinguishers, because if you don't get it, the zombies going to creep up right behind you and grab you, so I just bend over and get it for right. safety reasons. But let's see. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the zombies in the graveyard here, they pretty much respawn no matter what, so killing them is, uh, killing them is rather pointless. So we're just going to, like, push around them. This room right here is a heavy reset. Well, I mean, the prison in general is a heavy reset yeah. point. Fortunately, this they're room all... specifically. Nice entry. Yeah, that's that's very very good entry. Fortunately, they're all like they're all they're all in their standard shambling state. They're not going turbo or anything. I have a feeling that that zombie right there, the burning one, is about to go turbo. If you are able to mash quickly, you can get out of the grab without taking damage. I failed to do it that time. But. Generally speaking, as I said before, dodging zombies in this Resident Evil is very different compared to all the others. Right. Because there's some, there's some animations, you know, because the corridors in, 
like the, the the general level design and corridors and Code Veronica, like everything is everything is very very tight movement. Like every like it's like it's not very easy to like veer around zombies as it is in previous Resident Evil games. So, um, but they also have they also have move sets where they can just like lunge directly to the right, like 90 degrees to the right or 90 degrees to the left, and just like grab you, take a chunk out of your neck. They're not uh, they're not very forgiving in this game. Yeah, there's not so much going on right now. So if you have any lovely donations, go ahead, sir. Yeah, well we've got a nice one. Major Jiglin donates five hundred dollars. Uh -huh. What? Yeah. yeah. All he says is, "My is there, a, is there a Major Jiglin in the crowd? <laughs> this beautiful man right here. Who? Man. GG, bro. That's what's up, homie. That good awesome, stuff, good dude. stuff. He says, my lord chooses where the money goes. My lord? Yes, my lord. Let's yes. give it to, uh... Kill the animals. What was the Super Metroid or Mega Man? Which one are we doing? Oh, that was good. Super Metroid, kill the animals. Kill nice. the animals it is. That's a good one. Yeah. The zombies in this, uh, the zombies so far have actually been pretty cooperative, which is nice. Yeah. But uh, generally, the uh, the easiest, the easiest uh, dodges that you can hope for are the ones where they're not, where they're one not going turbo, and two, you have to kind of, you have to kind of graze them a little bit. Like you kind of, you kind of run at them, and then you take like a slight curve, you know, do a sharp right or a sharp left, and generally it throws off their, uh, it shows, it throws off the uh, hit detection for their grabs. We're just going to be pushing some uh, boxes here. If you have another one, go ahead. Yes. Um, we have $50 from Insidion. I said years ago that I'd donate uh, as soon as I had the means to, and uh, time to make good on that. Love Mega Man X runs as well, so I got to chip in to see that. Here you on yeah. that. The uh, area coming up here. All we're going to do is just uh, correct our angle and hold up. You can actually push the zombies over the railing here if you get bit. Here's the introduction for the lovely Doberman dogs that everyone knows in Resident Evil. Generally speaking, they're not too much of a problem in this game. Unless you take bad lines. Yeah, I can't really can't really find any occasions in Code Veronica where dogs are going to waste a lot of time, but occasionally they occasionally they bust out with a command grab, kind of yeah. like a kind of oh. like a remake esque command grab where they just like grab your arm and start biting you, shaking you vigorously, and that tends to uh, waste a lot of time, like about seven seconds if you get grabbed by one. So it's pretty it's a pretty sizable chunk of time and there's really not much you can do about dodging that, but um, it exists. Let's remember here there's multiple ways to uh, there's multiple ways to deal with this room, but pessimism per no, personal there's, preference. There's a command grab right there. Yeah, that was that stop. was that was the example of the turbo zombie grab. Basically what happens is you get bit instantly and you can't shake out of it. Like normally in Code Veronica, you're able to, you're able to just like waggle the stick and just like throw the zombie off um, without getting bit. <coughs> also so, for, oh, I'm sorry to mean to interrupt you. No, 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 it's cool. It's, it's just that's like the one time. It's 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 the one Resident Evil game where you can actually get away with shaking off a zombie and having it not bite you. Yeah, for getting uh, faster text, you just really hold down action. In other Resident Evil games, you mash for speed, but this one and a lot, pretty much the older ones is just hold the, the text to go by as fast as they can. Yeah. Here we get to save. We have to go save everyone's favorite character in this game. I love Steve. Steve Burnside. <laughs> that's, the, that's the reason everyone's watching this run right now is for Steve. Save the Steves. 
Yeah, so you could either take a sort of zigzag pattern between those first two zombies, or you can hug the wall on the right. Um, kind of difficult to say which one is more consistent. But in general, because the zombies have a very, very high grab rate, it's actually quite fortunate that there is an that there is an ability that lets you break out without taking a bite. But it is quite infuriating when uh, when you get grabbed by a turbo zombie and you can't break out of it. Especially back to back, sometimes it can happen up to three times in a room. $50 from Blood Fencer. I've been watching every GDQ event for the past six years, and it just keeps getting better. Looking forward to seeing Code Veronica for the very first time getting destroyed completely in the glitch run. Thanks for tuning in, man. Appreciate yeah. it. So you'll notice earlier uh, the handgun was not taken. Uh, there's, not too terribly many, there's not too terribly many enemies that you actually need to kill in uh, Code Veronica, like mostly on the first disc. You just like kind of leave everything alive mostly. Um, so putting away the handgun, you know, maybe all the people at home, you know, might be wondering, you know, you see Claire running around with a knife, and only a knife. It's like, well, is this this is this a knife run? I'm, what's going on here? But it's actually, it just so happens that the knife is like, is actually the fastest way to uh, kill the first enemy that we're going to come across. So it's not like a pure knife run. We have 25 from Rail Mom. Another small donation for Doctors Without Borders. Continue with building momentum of donations for this great cause. Thanks again to the gaming community, the organizers, staff, and donors for their efforts. That's why we give a little tricky sometimes. Yeah, it's actually uh, there's actually several ways that that uh, that that dodge can mess up. <laughs> um. But he managed, but basically, basically, it's like with some of these zombies, you have to you have to guess which line to take, um, and it's like not really possible to react and come up with a backup strat. Like once you realize what the zombie is about to do, so if you're running in front of the zombie, then the zombie could go turbo and just grab and bite you instantly. But if you're running behind him, sometimes what he'll do is he'll have a uh, a sort of spin in place. Dark Souls players will be more familiar with the term poise, where he the zombie basically has more poise than Claire, so you can't uh, you can't push behind him when he spins around. Like sometimes the zombie has more poise than Claire. Yeah, it's, it's not like RE one where uh, you can push zombies aside. Yeah, there are there are in cases where yeah. you can't push zombies, and it's a really bad situation. Yeah, especially if you guess wrong. Haven't really tested too terribly much, but generally zombies. Like as like for Claire, the zombies do have the zombies do have more poise for the most part. But you can basically the best you can do is like try to graze them, just like kinda slide off of their hitbox, and hopefully you're able to um hopefully you're able to evade their grab detection just a little bit. This crowd over here That was awesome. No, that, that was good. That's really good. But yeah, that, that 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 was that was actually uh, that was actually quite risky. <coughs> Pessimism doing a little bit of showboating over here. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the um, like once you grab the biohazard card, there's uh, like the easiest way would normally be to just like sort of lure the zombies towards you a little more and then just kind of run behind them on the hole, or you can run in front of the zombies if they aren't uh, if they're running at their if they're shambling at like their slowest. At like their slowest speed, but what he did just there was there was uh, there was just enough of a gap. So you know it's not too fast, not too slow, but it was. It was but he seized the opportunity and he was able to he was able to just go right through there. Yes, my lord. My lord. Yeah. My lord. Yes. <laughs> my lord. And Anonymous $5, it says, I want to congratulate Rod Derps on a great run of RE1. Glad to be awake for the RE block. I wish you luck on the Code Veronica run, Pessimism. Right. I will do my best to stay awake for it. I appreciate it. Thank and you so much. Yeah, make some noise from Rod Derps. Awesome run. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. 
I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. I'm glad I could be here. Yes, my lord. My lord. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Yeah, if you have another donation, go ahead. Not yeah. so much going on right now. $50 from Cosmo Other Coder. Been watching On Demand for a couple years. First time watching live. Keep it going, guys. Oh, and animals, frames, and all other speedrunning stuff. Duck151 with $30. Staying up extra late for the Resident Evil runs. I know it's definitely been worth it. Best of luck on the run. Donation goes to save the animals because they'd save you if it was up to them. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Cabs with $50. Wake up, watch amazing speedruns, donate to a good cause, sleep, repeat. Ah, the good life. <laughs> Accord with $10. First time watching from the UK. Sorry I couldn't donate more. I loved playing Code Veronica on the Dreamcast as a kid, and I can't wait to see it glitched out. Ruo with 750. Sporadic SGDQ watcher and first time donating. What you guys are doing is amazing. And keep up the good work. $50 from Enza Denimo 222. Really enjoying the stream. I hope all the runners try hard to beat the games as fast as they can. I think you're going to try a little bit hard there, Pessimism. Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so. This is the uh, first enemy that we uh, have to kill. Good buddy, yep. Stretch Armstrong. Good old buddy. So Bandersnatches are uh, among the uh, are among the more annoying enemies in the game. But uh, what Pessimism is going to do is he's going to set it up in such a way that he can get as many hits out of the knife as possible. Ooh. Mm, I messed that up yeah, a little bit. You're a little, little far forward there, but uh, basically, what he, what he was trying to do was uh, he um, was the uh, was the band, was he tried to lure the Bandersnatch into you know pulling, pulling itself, pulling itself across the way, and then uh, try and sort of wedge Claire between the Bandersnatch and the uh, the guardrail, mm -hmm. so that that way he wouldn't have to um, set back up. If done correctly, you can uh, you just slash him and he misses a couple times. I unfortunately was positioned incorrectly. That was a that was an insta, wasn't it? No, that was no. a shakeable one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. He like Over. if it was if it if it was inst if it was instant then. It like then, yeah, like the, the, the bite would have happened, like the bite noise would have happened like a split second after he's like ah. Yeah, o over time, over time, you, uh, people will, will know that like okay that was instant and no that was not instant. It's it, it's it happens quick, like it's like you can tell when the bite happens like, and then uh, you can tell when it's not like the uh, command grab. In most Resident Evil games, when you get put into caution, your running speed is decreased. Fortunately for Code Veronica, there is a decrease, but it's extremely minimal compared to, say, RE2, RE3, etc., etc. Right. It's basically, it's it's not completely negligible, but it's also, but it's also just enough that grabbing a green herb would wind up actually losing you more time to heal from that. So we're just going to uh, wait until the uh, next uh, first aid spray to heal. But it definitely lowers your uh, it lowers your turning radius, hmm. like or your turning speed rather, by about uh, by about three to five percent, and uh, it also lowers your speed by about one percent. I'd probably say like around two percent actually. You have any more, my friend? Absolutely do. We got two hundred dollars from your old dad. <laughs> I've donated every GDQ, so this will. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Your old dad would be proud to hear you clapping. Um, I've donated every GDQ so far, so this won't be any different. I know this money will go to a good cause. Good luck to all the runners, and thank you, staff and commentators. Your old dad is proud of you. An extra fifty dollars goes to the guy in the red plaid shirt to save or kill the animals. 
Um, I'll say save the animals. <coughs> what? Oh, we're saving them. We're yeah, saving I mean, we, we we just we just had we just had five hundred dollars go to, go towards killing the animals. Ooh. I think I want to I think I want to yeah. stir the pot at a little bit. At least fifty. At least fifty. <laughs> just a little I'm, bit. I'm a little worried, but I'm sure you can clear this just fine. He, he's in the deepest of he's in the deepest of cautions right now. Yeah, red caution. So right now, pessimism has uh, less than one hundred HP. Yeah. Which is uh, out of Claire's uh, max of two hundred. Whenever you're, uh, whenever you go under, um, actually, it's really more under like, it's really more under fifty HP, I think. So this is actually like really close. We have an anonymous five hundred dollar donation. Ooh. Uh -huh. One of my favorite and most memorable <laughs> AGDQ moments was catching Carsey's Resident Evil HD Remaster run at the start of last year. And oh. I fell in love with watching horror game runs ever since. Good luck to Pessimism. Thank you for your luck. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. I was very fortunate you yeah, got Yeah, like I was able to push that guy off. Otherwise, I probably would have been in danger. Fortunately, we're about to come across two killing items. So I'll be put back up to fine. We've got $10 from Mr. Marximus11. Always great to donate to an awesome cause, but even better when one of my favorite streamers and friends is running an amazing game. Pess is the best. Much love, and I know you're going to smash this run. Yo, yeah, much love. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Scary jump scares. Here's the healing that we... Yeah, I kinda, would appreciate at this point. Yeah, it's a good thing that it's there too. So that should heal you back up to around, to around 150. Damage data hasn't really been mined for this game yet. All we know is that the max HP value is two is 200. Less than 101, and you're in uh, caution. So you suffer uh, speed decreases at that point. But you don't suffer any major speed decreases until you are in danger, which is around 25 HP or less, I believe. $10 from S. Dreadnog. Uh, new to speedrunning, and I absolutely love it, just as much as I love the cause this is for. Good going, guys. Thanks for your donation. Mad as a Hatter donates us $150. Says, I never knew this existed until I stumbled on through it uh, through Carl Sagan 42. Hope uh, this is a much needed pick update. Cheers from Alaska. What's up, Alaska? Hello, Alaska. So the bow gun here is uh, going to be. Oh, I messed that up. No. Oh, okay, you hit nine instead of two. I was, I was like, wait, but you hit two. One hundred and fifty dollars from Von Osmond's longtime viewer, first time donating. Almost slept through the segment I wanted to donate in, but here you go. Kill the frame, uh, kill the frames, and save the animals. So the bowgun there, as I was saying, is uh, requisite for. Um, well, first up, these albinoids here, you just absolutely can't, uh, you absolutely can't get through there, except maybe like... It's possible to run through them. It's possible, it's possible to run through them, but it's, it's a very, very, very slim chance, yeah, you so can, you're yeah. very, so you're more, so you're more likely to suffer like one electric shock going through there, like about one or two electric shocks. But we needed the bowgun for the uh, glitch that we are about to perform later. It's not like a... It's not like a terribly game-breaking glitch, but it does uh, significantly change out the route throughout disc one for Claire. Mm -hmm. But also because we need uh, explosive arrows for uh, some bosses later as Chris. But this is pretty much the uh, end of the training facility section. 
$10 from Herbsy. Hey guys, keep on going. Watch the GDQ for three years now, and it's always fun. Just bought a shirt too. Have fun, and good luck to everyone. Thank you, thank you. London donated $5. I am excited to see you run Code Veronica, Pessimism. I wish you luck on the run and hope, you for the, and hope the best for you, because Code Veronica can be a hard run to do. Great job on the run again, Raw Derp. Always enjoyable seeing you run the games. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Much love. Okay. You grab that one? Wow, those iframes. <laughs> Why that one as opposed to the ones like... Uh, What's that? I said, why, 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 why that uh, bowgun pickup as opposed to this one over here? Well, it's for double, it's for safety, so in case anything goes wrong for Tyrant or Tyrant on the plane, um, I don't have to go and pick him up in the spider room on, in Antarctica. Oh, okay. Because that Brian saw what happened to me last night, it's terrible. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. Import, that, that's the nature of the run, though. Yeah, but thank you the, for the message of the luck and everything. I appreciate it. You're right. This Resident Evil game is definitely one of the hardest in the franchise to run. Do you have any more, my friend? Which is not too much to really talk about right now until, like, no. the glitches come up and boss well, fights and stuff. There's still, there's still a fair bit to talk about between now and then, but... Yeah, yeah, I can get some. Uh, Adam donates $25. Hey guys, this is Adam Korolik with Figure It Out Productions, and I just wanted to help aid the speedrunning community. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Adam Korolik. Mattia5 donates $35. Happy to <laughs> donate to a good cause. Watch out for those zombies and save those frames. Yeah, those zombies are feisty tonight. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this puzzle over here, just uh, tracing the lineage of the of the uh, very well-adjusted Ashford family. Which is really just, you know, press all the buttons in the right order and uh, grab the hidden ceramic, typical Resident Evil style. Uh, you guys remember when we got a $500 anonymous donation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he donates again with $50. Snitch Hots accidentally sent the $500 to anonymous, so here's another 50 just so Carsey knows I actually managed to catch him on the couch. Aw. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Snitch. Thank you so much. Rithendel also with $150. Hello from Australia. I've been watching for a few years now, and I can finally donate. Thank you all for this amazing event and amazing charity. Getting in some of that esports rep. Snitch is actually, uh, it's actually Heroes of the Storm player. Actually, can I note real quick that um, it's a quality of life thing that um, if you have a full inventory and you try to grab like a green herb or a fast, I think even maybe even a blue herb if you're poisoned, you, you can actually use that, that herb or fast even if your inventory is full, which is nice. It is very nice, yes. I thought I hit eight by accident, but I hit nine. This is a lovely tune for the Asher family. <laughs> I don't, to see so I don't foresee anything bad happening. No. Mm -mm. It's quite nice. Oh, we got one of our long-armed friend here. The truth be told, that is actually... That is actually, like, not a particularly overwhelming entrance for... <laughs> For that particular Bandersnatch, but Bandersnatches are, uh, I think, like part of the uh, scare appeal in Bandersnatches is just that they have a lot of HP and are also stretchy, have a lot of reach, so they're just a little unpredictable, I guess. I'm gonna try to get a line to where it throws this Bandersnatch off to where it doesn't try to slap me. Nice. Nice. Well, he went to her, but he missed, luckily, for me. Oh, 
Also, you might ask yourself, why do I have the lighter equipped? Basically, there are bats in this game, and the lighter keeps them from attacking you. Yeah, like generally, generally Code Veronica in itself is a uh, very, very dark game. So having a lighter to be able to find your way around is quite nice. But it also has the added benefit of keeping away bats. Keep focus, brother. We have $50 from Jan40. Hey there, keep up the good work and love watching the stream during my summer holidays. But please, save the animals, not frames. Greetings from Germany and good luck to everyone. Cheers from USA, my friend. Speaking of Save the Animals, a quick update on Save the Animals versus Kill the Animals. Kill the Animals is ahead by $114. Very, very close race. They're both sitting around 30000 So wow. as, this, as this gets closer and closer to, to Super Metroid, I hope you make that work. Where is your empathy, people? <laughs> Kill the Animals was winning for the longest time last year out of nowhere. Save came out and won. I feel, like, I feel like 80. Save the Animals is overdue. You know, it, it, it needs to happen. Yeah. Did you say it's overdue? Did I say that? I, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, Save the Animals needs to win at least once, you know. I'm sure it's won maybe past uh, GDQs. Has it? Yeah, one I'm, I'm pretty sure it's won AGDQ. like once or twice. Okay. I think one of the runners is actually on like a good run too, and then he had to save the animals, <laughs> and he was like, "No, what the heck?" Oh, it had to happen. Yeah, it had to. So generally, with uh, Bandersnatches, their uh, their tracking is the main problem, less their hitboxes. Oh. So they tend to they tend to do like a little bit of a Dark Souls esque, like I'm going to track you while I'm in the middle of the attack. So when the attack hits. You know, when the attack hits, you're taking damage, sort of thing. But uh, depending on, uh, but depending on how you approach them, depending on how you come at them, you can sometimes avoid the attacks. This one over here, you just have to run completely perpendicular, and he'll miss, because that attack is just that attack only tracks for maybe a few frames before he actually commits to it. So we're going to be solving uh, the rest of this area here, going to pick up the eagle plate, but not before we uh, dodge a couple more bandersnatches. Yes, this next room coming up is very dangerous. I actually died here when I was practicing a few days ago. Hopefully they are nice. Yeah. Well, generally, as long as you... <laughs> Ooh, okay. That was not the start we wanted. It's fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, that's, that's good. good. Okay, we're fine. Yeah. It seems like once you, it seems like if you just run directly, directly towards them. There we go. Cool. Nice. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got my buttons mixed up right there. Uh, it happens. I think you I think you think I think pessimism was trying to clap. I'm not sure. No, he yeah, was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> he put forth the effort. I saw it. But yeah, generally it seems like as long as you run towards the uh, center of the Bandersnatch's hitbox, then if, if you're close enough, they will miss. As long as they don't do like the, as long as they don't do like the inside, or as long as they don't do like the inside out swipe that some of them do, where they just hit 90 degrees in front oh, of them, then you generally should not get hit if you're close enough when they attack. That, that second banner snatch was very tamed. Normally it would turn around and try to go for another hit. Yeah. Yeah. And those, like and that, like that banner snatch is like a picture perfect example of like exactly how far their arms can stretch. Mm. They can smack you from a mile away. I'm doing a little backtrack in here going back to the first part of the game where I got like the extinguisher and stuff like that. That wasn't Turbo 
was it? No. No, that was just about line. I'm just, hoping, I'm just hoping you won't get jinxed, that's all. What's that? That's why I keep asking, was that, was that turbo, was that turbo? Uh, so there's a little trick right there to where you can like, start that you can run to the side, but unfortunately I did not get it. And this zombie right here is a little tricky as well. Oh, I got it, okay, nice. good. That's good, that's... But yeah, some of, the, uh, some of the doors in this game, like if they're, like if you, like the doors where you don't press X to open them and load the other rooms. Sometimes there's uh, doors that slide open. Those you can pause, and the door will continue opening while you're in the pause menu. So you can set up for some, uh, for some pretty, uh, for some pretty slick dodges that way. Before the zombies actually aggro. Get a lovely 20 second door here. But it's supposed to be foreboding. Mm-hmm. It is. This guy oh sometimes this this zombie right here is always in turbo state. If he grabs you if he grabs you, he's going to bite you hundred percent of the time. And sometimes he likes to swerve to the right. Nice. That was great. But this particular <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's like, but that's, but that's a zombie, you know. But it's, but that, but that zombie is actually, that zombie is actually a. It's very a, special. Uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's an especially bad zombie, <laughs> because he has a lot of HP. He's always in turbo, and he actually, he actually, he's actually like, legitimately trolly. Like he, like he's, like he's programmed to swerve out of your way deliberately so that you miss. And as you saw, normally, you know, taking a load of grenades to the face would normally blow your head off and probably half your torso, but that zombie disagrees. You get a lovely two in here pushing this thing around. Yeah, we have a. Five dollars says, "Hey, I'm Pico, watching from Spain. Just wanted to say good luck to Pessimism and thanks to the Couch Crew. Also, save the animals." Thank you, Pico. Appreciate it. Cheers, Pico. Thank you. Dan P with five dollars. Much love to all the runners and behind-the-scenes staff. You are all truly heroes. Yes, they are indeed. <laughs> $50 from X9 just says, Hi, David. What's up, David? How's it going? Hello. David seems really cool. Yes, yes, he does. Hello. Is there, is there David anywhere in the crowd? I don't know. I can be David. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to be David. Everyone gets to be David. Yeah. Everyone gets to be David. Some days, everyone has their David days. We have one hundred and thirty-three dollars from Twizta. Ooh. I never dare to play these games myself. Glad someone else can do it for me. Love from Sweden. Also, save the animals. Hope you're enjoying the run, my friend. Basically, we're pretty much out of the really dangerous spots for uh, Island One with Claire. The rest of it, we're setting up, getting ready to go. We do the glitch and then just smash through everything. Yeah, there isn't uh, too terribly much else except leading towards the uh, leading towards the exit, the first disc. Which is fortunate because there's only one disc for the uh, the Xbox 360 version and the PS3 version. The Dreamcast, I believe, has two discs, correct? Yeah. And also the GameCube, right? Yeah. yeah the game, yeah. The, the, the Dreamcast and GameCube versions have both have two discs, but uh, 
in my mind and in my heart, this is still disc one. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, always. Got it good is, luck yeah. on the bandersnatches here. Mr. W Albert Wesker makes his introduction, but you will not see it. Yeah. In this cutscene here, actually, some of you might be familiar with uh, the rat, D.I.J. You can actually uh, encounter, you can actually see him behind the, uh, the plant during the Wesker cutscene. They actually created, Capcom actually created a fun little scavenger hunt in this game. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a battle game that you can unlock as a bonus, and um, by completing said battle game, you can find a diary written by a rat that you occasionally see in a cutscene. So here we're setting up the glitches. You see where my lighter is. Right. So basically, uh, what he's doing is he's equipping the uh, flame arrows. I have no idea if that messes it up, does it? No, 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 you're good. You're okay, good. Yeah. Okay, I'm so, so never, just, yeah, just, just do that. it. Yeah, it doesn't, okay, it doesn't yeah. mess it up. Yeah, you got it. Nice. So the glitch is, um, what it is, is uh, it is a quantity value. Like, it basically changes the, uh, the quantity value of uh, one weapon with another, or with another item. And in this case, uh, instead of drawing from the 10 explosive bowgun arrows that are currently in the bowgun, it keeps the weapon model loaded as well as the attack animation, and it uh, instead draws from the 80 or so regular arrows whenever you use one bowgun bolt. So now he has, now he's able to use 80 explosive arrows. But basically, what what it what it does is the uh, how it works is the uh, the playing manual. What you do is you say, for instance, you have the playing manual in slot one, and you have a weapon in slot two and the thing you want to draw the quantity value from in slot three. What you do is instead of reading the playing manual from the menu, you go into the file menu instead with the playing manual still in slot one. If you open it and hit use, then the glitch will not work. So instead you need to go to the file menu, hit playing manual, and uh, then it will eliminate the playing manual from your inventory that way. But the, but the trick is it moves everything over without changing what is in the equipment slot. So that's what allows that glitch to work. Fortunately for, for us, the banner sentries aren't there when coming in. Of course, they appear after. And right here is where you'll see that the glitch is very nice. You smash through zombies that are in the way. Yeah. As you can see here, he kind of slid off of the zombie while he was still uh, while he was still going down, their hitboxes don't, uh, their hitboxes and their collision boxes don't uh, turn off until the, until their death animation is complete. So sometimes you can get uh, caught up if you like lower your weapon and start running immediately. That's the fortunate thing about Code Veronica is the recovery times are fast. You can do a little menu trick by holding down or yeah, down right at the same time and so you can glide through the menu like that. So we went from slot one to slot four to Oops. slot five to slot eight. Menuing is very helpful in Resident Evil games. I just like trying to optimize your menus. Don't go into your inventory more than you absolutely have to. But the effect of the uh, value swap glitch or the playing manual glitch lasts, lasts for as long as you don't choose to equip another weapon. So as long as pessimism doesn't equip another weapon, we're safe. We can still use it. I actually have a question about that. Um, when you get to play as Claire again later, do you keep that same glitch? Um, no. The uh, effect of the glitch goes away um, as soon as uh, there is an, an in-game event where the uh, weapon model would be unequipped. So in Claire's case, that would be after Nosferatu. So, as, so like as long as as long as you know the uh, as long as another weapon is not equipped then it'll stay for as long as Nosferatu. And you can keep using explosive arrows as long as you pick up regular arrows. Okay. If that makes, if that makes any sense. Definitely. It does make a lot of sense.
But uh, there's also another, there's also an alternative method to the glitch, which allows you to get an infinite green herb. Um, if you have the playing manual in slot one, your handgun in slot two, and a green herb in slot three, yes, sugar, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you have the uh, if you have the green herb in uh, in slot three, then uh, you can use the playing manual glitch, and it would transport the um, the green herb into your equipment slot. At which point, you could fire it off because it's a quantity value of one. But the green herb has a unique property in Code Veronica in that whenever its quantity value is is at zero, what will happen is um, you can use it, and it just it just underflows to 65,535, so you can just keep using it over and over again. So you have what is essentially an infinite green herb. We got uh, 25 or $20 from Shapeshifting Silverware. Forgot to rinse off my pot and almost made soapy pasta. I reckon this run has me suitably entertained and or distracted. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying it, my friend. Ray Crest with $40. Thanks to all the runners to do a wonderful show. Big kisses from France. Luvik with $50. Awesome event, as every time. What about some moo for everyone involved? Moo for the runner, moo for the tech crew, moo for the reader, moo for everyone. Moo, moo, moo. Guess what I want to kill? The cows. Moo? The cows. <laughs> but they make the milk. They also make the beef. <laughs> <laughs> Also, another trick you can do, you can pos you can move around before you can actually gain control of Claire. Like, normally, I'd be facing straight, but you see I was facing down when I was able to control Claire we again. It's a cool little trick that'll save you a second. Now we have the ever-so-lovely mm -hmm. alarm that goes on for, like, the next five, six minutes. We've got $10 from Lucy56. Watching GDQ since four years and horror speedruns are always the best. It's nice to see the runner speedrunning Resident Evil games. Good luck to Pessimism and a lot of greetings from my favorite speedrunner, Carsey, on the couch. What's up? Yo, what up? Thank you, thank you. For some reason, that cutscene didn't trigger when I it was interesting. What, the one where he runs? I kind of yeah, dozed yeah. off for a sec. The one where like he shows him running off. For some reason, it didn't trigger when I stopped climbing. I, I just automatically hit select. It's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. I must have hit it a frame in advance or something. So right about here, you know, you could even go as far as to uh, put the um, put the bowgun with explosive bolts away, and you would still have it. Uh, you would still have it equipped. So there's one such example of the uh, of the bending cancel that was mentioned at the uh, at the start of the run actually working. Um, like again, the way you do that is you press is you press right in action on the same frame. And uh, in doing so, you cancel the bend down animation to pick it up, pick up items. So it's something that could be done completely on accident, but if you're really good at it, it would actually save an upwards of, I don't know, how many items do you actually have to bend down to pick up? Probably save close to, I don't know, 40, 45 like seconds throughout the entire run. I'm not exactly sure how many items that you that are that require you to actually bend down. Um, yeah, I don't know. So if it saves about if it saves about 
20 point eight, seconds. Yeah, it saves about 0.8 seconds every time you pick it up, so it adds it adds up a lot. That's like almost a second each time. Mm -hmm. So it could probably be like it could probably be like eh, maybe like 30 seconds or so. Yeah, that sounds about right. Seems about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 30 seconds is a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if you can tell, but the self-destruct system has been activated. <laughs> Unfortunately, you you can't uh, do said glitch here because there is a cutscene. Whenever you press, <coughs> whenever you press the action button, there's like a cutscene that just like pans the camera over to the dead body before Claire picks it up. So you are unable to uh, cancel that. But all this is uh, leading up to raising the bridge so that the uh, so that we can escape the island via the airplane. Yeah, via the seaplane over there. And in doing so, it means that we can't go back the way we came, so we have to go all the way around. And while we're doing so, we have to we have to fight a boss. Boss that's very familiar to the Resident Evil series. Just a boss. Five minutes until detonation. So I have to sit through like this is one of the few unskippable cutscenes. In the game, well, you can skip you can skip this one, which introduces the boss. But otherwise, you actually have to sit and watch the elevator physically go up. And then we're also getting like these extra long opening sequences with the boom, 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 boom pretty much every door. The tension is real. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to uh, just use the uh, explosive arrow glitch on this boss over here. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, eighteen. Nineteen? Twenty. What does it take to stop this man? <laughs> <laughs> what does it take? I uh, seem to have <laughs> it's, it takes about twenty. Twenty explosive arrows to take him down. And then it's gonna take twenty four when we encounter him again in the plane. On the plane. Don't trigger disc two just yet, by the way. If at all possible. Yes, my lord. My lord. <laughs> Fifty dollars from RD. Just simply says, "Awesome event. Keep up the good work." Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thirty from Volantis. I'm definitely not that David, but I can still donate. Hi back. Hello. What's up? What's up? Markman gave us $23. Much love to the GDQ staff from the Evo staff. Thought I'd donate during my favorite Resident Evil game. Ooh. Hi, Carsey and Sumichu. Good luck being awesome. What's up, Mark? Wabberjack with $20. You're all doing a great job. Keep it up. P.S. Kill the animals. Thank you, my lord. My lord? I don't know. I think, I think Claire has a nasty habit of saving animals. Oh, are you referring to... Okay, the rat. But anyways, the um, the tyrant over here. In order to beat him, it takes 24 explosive arrows. Literally, all you can, all you have to do, 
for this fight, it's actually really, really easy. Is uh, You just have to mix up 24 explosive arrows, or just use the glitch and get 24 explosive arrows, and just uh, fire exactly that many, and then catapult him off, and he will never reach you. Alternatively, you could use three BOW gas. BOW gas actually cuts down his HP in half. And then uh, followed up with two acid rounds. That's another way to kill him without moving. If you look at the top left, you can actually see the uh, you can actually see the DIJ, the rat. Nice kill. Yeah. Thank you, sir. But yeah, if you look yeah, up DIJ to the right there. yeah, you can see you can see the rat shaking up there. That's actually the uh, that's actually DIJ, like who I was who I was mentioning earlier, like the Easter egg. Developer's inside joke. Wait, this this is this too now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is this too. Here Venomoth is introduced. Mm -hmm. And Venomoth can do some nasty things, him and his buddies that you'll see. In a little bit. Our good buddy ATV Moonlights as Herbert West. <laughs> Herbert West. The reanimator. Ozul with $50. Good luck with the Code Veronica run. Thanks to all you guys contributing to this amazing cause and for all these hours of speedrun entertaining. Greetings from Spain and of course, kill the animals. Thank you for your donation. Appreciate it. What am I doing? I think I'm going to a different room. <laughs> Still good. Oh man, <laughs> the reactions. <laughs> I think if you go along, you'll probably be able to dodge them. Oh yeah, yeah, you're good. Yep. There we go. So these spiders are uh, these spiders are pretty random. When spiders aggro in this game, they just like they just like run at you. They're like hell on wheels. So um, you kind of have to hope they go in one direction or another, and you generally have to react. But uh, because there's two spiders in that room and they're very close quarters, you can't always get what you want. And uh, sometimes they'll uh, sometimes they'll grab you or hit you with an acid attack before you leave because space is very limited to move in there. Also, it takes forever to kill them. I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but they eat bullets. Yeah, actually it's like, yeah, even even with grenades, they generally take like two or more. Mm-hmm. So. Unfortunately, I have not found a gun that uh, kills them in one hit. Doesn't really matter too much though. So, so for this here, we just have to examine this in order to be able to tell uh, what uh, shape we have to cut the valve handle in later. $5 from Spiky Peacemaker. Good luck, mm -hmm. Pessy. Much peace and love to the entire Resident Evil community. Greetings from Spiky Peacemaker. Thank you, Spiky. The homie Spiky. Thanks for that donation, man. So we're using the BOW gas. And, uh, well, not using the BOWS, but transporting it into this room, and it just happens to break and flood this room. A little uh, lore factoid here the, P or the uh, BOW gas is actually the uh, P epsilon gas from Resident Evil 2, where if you deploy it in scenario A, then it makes the enemies in scenario B in the laboratory stronger, and the effect is still much the same in Code Veronica because. 
there were actually three spiders in that room, one of the spiders that we couldn't kill. And that actually winds up becoming the boss spider later. Oh, because wow. it's been exposed to, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually the, uh, the Black Widow that comes out of the ice later. I never knew that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. It got exposed to the uh, P Epsilon gas for too long, so it wound up uh, growing exponentially. Here are the next bosses that be introduced. He's not going anywhere, is he? No. At least we hope not. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no. as mentioned, open. No. Yeah, as mentioned before, you can just go ahead and straight up put away the um, the grenade launcher and the uh, bow gun, and you'll still have the glitch enabled. So, as you can see, Claire still has her bow gun equipped. It's still, it still it'll still fire explosive arrows. Basically, just uh, generally using it to trash zombies in tight corners or in tight corridors and uh, killing bosses. It's significantly easier to use the uh, crossbow or really any other gun for that matter than it is to use the uh, sniper rifle on uh, Nosferatu. So with the um, <clears throat> so the valve handle, now that we have that, we can use that to uh, cut an octagonal valve handle in the machinery room across the way from here, and that's what we're going to use to uh, turn off the uh, to turn off the flow of poison gas, which is preventing us from escaping. Good old clumsy Steve. <laughs> That's right. His infatuation with Claire. That was an accident. You were hoping to bank that for Steve later. Right. Speaking of Steve. I was trying to do the menu thing I was talking about earlier. Down right has a cross. Oh well. Yeah. Sometimes an unfortunate side effect of fast menuing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't always turn out the way you want. It, it should be fine, because when he gets to the platform where the, bo where the boss fight happens, there is a hidden fast on the bottom right uh, of, the, of the map. Is that right? Um, Ship yeah, yeah, actually there is, so you could, you could probably grab that. I, you're, you're right, there is a, there is a fast there. Small time loss, but, yeah. at least you have another, another healing uh, item. Yeah, it is possible to escape Steve without taking a single hit, mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, but there is, there is a very, there is a very small chance that it'll fail, and if it does fail, then... You're toast. Yeah, you need, you need to be able to heal before he hits you, I believe, three times? Because it's it, it it does it does like 110 damage a slash, I think. If he hits you um, twice, it's over. Yeah, if he hits you twice, you're done. So you have to have, so you have to have either a, uh, you have to have a heal, or you have to be able to get the no damage strat. So we're just straight up avoiding the sniper rifle. There's straight up no need for that. Because we already have like 30 explosive arrows. Oh. Let's go ahead and look for that uh, bottom left. Somehow this man is still standing on his own. Yeah, he's Ooh, done. Can he make it? Yes, he got it. Good job. Thanks. Nice. Right there on the spot. Ooh, yeah. Jolly on the that spot. Was really close. <laughs> Now we're playing as Christopher, which is Claire's brother. So we still have the knife in our inventory because it's going to be used as a key item later. There's no need to eliminate it. And we're just swapping the handgun and the bullets for the, uh, 
explosive arrows and the. Uh, oh, that's, that's yeah, that's work. unfortunate. So he has to do the two cycle worm. If the worm busts out, and uh, oh, <coughs> nice. Yeah. So yeah. even if you cause enough damage to the worm, it needs to be up as you as you just saw. Like if he does, he does like a little dive into the ground. You can't yeah. trigger its death scene. I was doing that. Right. The worm has to be like the worm has to be out of the ground and screaming in order for you to actually trigger the death animation whenever you deal damage to it. So even if it's at zero HP, it won't die until the mm. next time that uh, it screams and you hit it. It'd be a nasty time loss for sure. But otherwise, it's um, I mean, it's like the 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 one cycle is, I'd say about like fifty percent of the time you'll get a one cycle, but otherwise it's going to be a. Otherwise, it's going to be a two cycle, and two cycle generally wastes like 10 seconds or so. Otherwise, the best you can do between cycles is just get as close as you can to the elevator and spin around and shoot him again. Yeah, also what you can do is if you don't want to fight the worm is you can go trigger the elevator, run back to the door you came through, and then go to the elevator and it'll you can go in. That's what's done on the knife category. Wait, you actually don't have to kill the worm? Yeah, you can just do that, what I just mentioned. Yeah, you can trigger the elevator. Of course, it takes time for the elevator yeah. to come down. But, but if you, you can. go back into the save room and go back out, the elevator's down. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, that's, that's what's done for the knife. Yeah, someone was someone was saying that you could avoid that you could avoid a, avoid the worm, but I didn't actually know that was possible. <laughs> If you have any donations, my friend. Yeah, I got, I got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I got an anonymous six. Uh, just says, first time donating. Always a blast watching you. Thank you, anonymous six. Aww. Another anonymous with $10. I found out GDQ in 2013. Definitely one of the best things I ever found on the internet. It's amazing. Kudos to all, and to Carcinogen, I hope to see your RE7 run in a future GDQ. Good luck to all the runners, and the money goes to the reader's choice. Another anonymous, $10. Sad to have missed the Silent Hill 2 run, but glad I can catch the Code Veronica run for a bit before going into work. What's up, Carsey? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Bru Bruno gives us $30. Love the event and all of the runs. Keep breaking games and borders. Money goes to getting Mega Man X for the marathon. One of my favorite speed games. Palmer with $30. Thanks for everything you do. This goes towards saving the frames. Smash Fiends gives us $5. <laughs> Good luck to the homie Pessy, and shout out to the homies on the couch and off, off screen. Donation goes to my lord's choice. The homie Dean. It's good to hear from you, man. What's up, dude? Much love, man. Uh, Mega Man. Mega Man. Cheers, Dean. So yeah, the uh, <clears throat> this uh, this section um, we want to choose to get the chemical here first before picking up the doorknob because if we don't, then we will encounter a sweeper in here when we exit. Sweepers are uh, poisonous Ooh, hunters, poisonous. which uh, will be introduced in a second. Got the. Bend cancel there. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's possible to not get swipe right there, but it's pretty difficult. Right. By the, by the time he gets the uh, turntable key, though, those hunters will despawn, so killing them isn't really uh, killing them isn't really worth it. So all you can do is uh, take a line and hope that you get away with less than two hits or so. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know uh, how much damage hunters do per swipe. I'd probably say like 25, 30. So let me ask you, um, I just based on what you see here, um, I want to say which 
Which version of the Hunter do you think is the most threatening? Um, really, it just depends on the room. But I would, I would say that I would say that the uh, sweeper is uh, probably is probably the more dangerous one because mm -hmm. when you when you encounter when you encounter the sweepers, they're like outside, so they can just like jump and uh, they can just go for the go for the jump attack. But on top of that, they're poisonous, so you won't be finding another blue herb after you encounter them in the um, in the training facility, the uh, training facility courtyard. So it'd be uh, it'd be a while before you could before you could heal from that. So that's it's like like those sweepers would just the sweepers just straight up ruin runs. Gotcha. Hunters, on the other hand, unless you get hit by a jump attack, like the jump attack actually. Um, Contrary to popular belief, hunters don't always instant kill. In Code Veronica, they uh, don't instant kill. They just do, they just do more than 50% of your max HP and damage, and uh, they tend to do jump attacks a lot more when you're in caution. And you know, that means you're less than 50% HP already if they're doing jump attacks. So, they're just more than likely to do it. Yeah, they'll do it. They'll shred you real fast. Yeah. In other Resident Evil games, though, the hunter's instant kill generally only happens. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, so these things right here, speaking of hunters, those uh, those cameras right there that Pessimism was having to dodge Metal Gear style. Um, <laughs> basically whenever they uh, whenever they whenever they whenever they get triggered, the uh, the hunters come in through the vents and uh, you either have to have to dodge it or kill it. But it still wastes like three seconds to get tagged by it because the intro animation or rather the you the you messed up animation. Return yeah. to your position. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, yeah, like hunters, they don't uh, they don't decapitate unless you're at uh, less than fifty percent HP. I don't believe they decapitate in Code Veronica, but they still do a lot of damage with jump slashes. So if you get hit by the, if you get hit by a jump slash. I hope you have, I hope you have health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hunters, particularly in Resident Evil Zero, they're very nasty. Just unlock you to death easily. Yeah, hunters and uh, hunters and remake mm -hmm. and hunters and zero are by far some of the worst because, well, it's like hunters and zero are just really, really tanky. And hunters and remake just have like. A lot of extra hit stun. Basically, when you get when you get hit by it, then you're reeling backwards for like five seconds for just no reason, which uh, generally sets them up for their instant kill. kill. Yeah, yeah, their one their one hit kill. They it's make like hunters very... hunters are very hunters one hit kill very liberally in Resident Evil HD Remaster. This Bandersnatch over here. <laughs> I tried. It's the last Bandersnatch in the game, but he's. Uh, He's not in a very. Uh, he's not. He's not. He's not in a very auspicious position. There's also some explosive arrows up there. Well, some explosive <coughs> powder up there, but generally you don't. Uh, generally, you don't need that. It helps to have for Alexia too, but uh, the faster option is going to be grenades. So for the hunters, whenever he uh, exited, the best thing to do is to hug the shutter as closely as possible, because what the hunter will do, because the hunter's hitbox is a little wider, it will swerve off of the uh, off of the level geometry and. Uh, lose a little bit of distance when chasing you. So he won't jump slash, he won't uh, he won't be able to swipe forward. He'll just be too far away to do anything. And this hunter will just continue to swipe at you even though he yeah. can't touch you. Yeah, it's like even if you're on the second floor, like he'll just keep he'll just keep slashing, he'll just keep running. He'll just look for a way to keep to keep attacking you because it's it's just like the track the enemy tracking in this game I would probably say is like is the uh, is the most temperamental thing 
temperamental being very generous, but <laughs> that's uh, generally what causes that's generally what causes you to take a lot of take a lot of pretty cheap hits for the most part. So to solve this puzzle, you have to um, you have to have a total of uh, seven liters of oil. And you do that by hitting the number three twice, hit number five once, so that you have one left over in five, and then you can just hit three, three, five again, and then you'll wind up with seven. There are like, they're like shotgun shells over the zombies get up from. Yeah. Oh, don't, if, you got to hit the lever. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, I forget totally that too. Totally autopiloting. Yeah. My mistake. That's okay, it's better, it's better, better that you get it now as yeah. opposed to like opening the shutter and realizing that the bridge isn't down. I, I mean, do, yeah, that happens, that yeah. happens, that happens to me at least like once every other speed run. I can't count how many times I've made that mistake. Yeah, but it's, it's such an easy one, it's such an easy one to make because, yeah. you know, you're, your brain just kind of, your brain just kind of tunes out. Fix it, just kind of just kind of fixates on you know moving to the next room because it's such a it's such a tiny thing, but you know and they're both like, oh, well do I do I go through door do I go do I do I pull the lever or just <laughs> yeah just autopilot through the door. Another hunter here. He's basically going to by swerving to by swerving to the right. Yeah, by swerving to the right, he actually uh, keeps the hunter from jumping. Because the hunter needs to um, actually be uh, locked on to the direct center of Chris's hitbox in order to be able to jump slash because it's a uh, proximity-based attack. So for these guys, hunters are actually deaf. So you could just like you could just like walk around this guy, and as long as he doesn't see you, you're you're good. But he always runs. He always moves in like a very specific path. So it's like a patrol pattern, kind of like the guards in Metal Gear Solid. Good room. Yeah. Good dodges here. The uh, airport somehow managed to survive the self-destruct system. <laughs> it was... I don't know, that self-destruct system was actually quite weak. It destroyed only, I think he only, I think Alfred only wanted to plant charges around like the, uh, around the uh, house. Here come the sweepers. This is a very, after the loading scene, everything is a very dangerous room. Hopefully they're nice. And let's see. Yeah, the sweeper's here. Um, you got this, I believe. By hugging Good. the yeah, nice. that 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 was that was actually. <laughs> that room that was, can turn very bad if you don't go through that door right away. Yeah, like uh, what he did was he collided with the first sweeper. Fortunately, before oh, that was an insta grab. Yeah. That was an insta bite. Yeah, that was one such example. Was that the first time he's taken an insta this run, or? Oh no, he's taken plenty. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that zombie. Yeah. Yeah, but the sweepers. Yeah, it's like you have to take a very specific line to get around it, and if you're off by even a little bit, then you'll get hit and you'll get poisoned. And there's not another blue herb until you go to fight the albinoid. Yeah. Bit of a pre-turn there for yep. working those guys. There's a hunter in here. You can just avoid him by holding up. At you, yeah. yeah. But it's like hunters. Yeah, hunters. Yeah, hunters generally run faster than you can. Uh, than you can get away from them. But uh, even worse, they tend to skate forward whenever they whenever they attack. So. 
it's like if you're running away from that hunter and he's running towards you, you're going to take a hit. So about the only option you have is to uh, is to fire off a shot at him. Unless you're in that room where you can just like hold up and just trigger the loading and get away from him. We have $10 from what is a name. Awesome run. Keeps me entertained while working. Money to the red shirt guy in the front row's choice. Red shirt guy in the front row's choice. Well, there happens to be another guy wearing a red shirt. Why don't we, why don't we make it towards his choice? Yeah. Let's save the animals. There we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. Yeah. We have $30 from Jodry. Gotta donate for a Resident Evil game as it's my favorite franchise. Good luck, Pessiman. Yo, thank you so much. Thank you for your time checking out the run. Appreciate it. And a lovely anonymous $150 donation with just a smiley face. Aww. Very nice. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> There's a couple more spiders here. Uh, this, yeah, the ceiling is just low enough to the point where the uh, spider, the second spider there, could hit you if you're not hugging the inside wall. But we're gonna hug the inside wall anyway because there's grenades right there that we need for um, that we need for Alexia. And here's the albinoid, an electric mutant thing, which can be albinoid, uh, the electric Pokemon of the albino variety. <laughs> No, that's that's literally that's that's literally what they're. You want to turn that way, good. Yeah. All right, this is good right here. I believe that's the albino that escaped. That, that you actually saw escape. Yeah. Isn't oh it? my Ooh. god! Did you actually get out of there without getting shocked? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know you could do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. No, that's that's that, that's actually. I, I, I legit did I, I legit didn't know that there was like that there was like a that there was a line you could run and not take damage from that because like usually when you drop into the water to get the uh, to get the plate the uh, the albo the the albinoid is going to shock you a few times mm -hmm. or if you're really unlucky is you're bending down it'll be close and it just slams you down yeah the albinoid is nasty. We have $50 from Stub A. First time I'm watching any Resident Evil runs live, and they're awesome. Dude, me too. Um, also, 99% <laughs> sure that a friend of mine is watching, as he loves the Resident Evil games. So, if possible, could the runner and or couch say hi to Joel? Hello, Hello Joel. Joel. What's up, Joel? Hope you're enjoying yourself with the runs. Much love hi, to Joel. you, Joel. What up, what up? I like Joel. Yeah, me too. He's an amazing person. I prefer the Billy variety. <laughs> uh, this little box is ridiculous sometimes. We're in the Antarctic now. Yeah, bro, this is the final part of the game. With Mr. Christopher. So the explosive arrows that he has left over from the uh, fight with the worm are generally used on the uh, tentacles that come out of the wall that are now populating the Antarctic base since Alexia has woken up. Mm -hmm. We got an anonymous $10, says, shout out to the late night hosts. You are the unsung heroes of the stream. Thanks a bunch. Put this towards your choice. I appreciate you 
saying uh, saying for it to go towards my choice, but the real heroes of the late night streams is the late night tech crew. Let's be real. Yes, <laughs> I love the tech crew. I really appreciate you guys so much. Yeah. To be honest, you guys weren't gonna get RE1, but the tech crew fixed the, the issues. So thank you guys. Yes, thank you, thank you. Roddy, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Roddy oh. donated $30 and says, back to work, but still watching SGDQ in the background. Donating because pessimism sounds like Nick Offerman. <laughs> Let's see that Majora's Mask glitch run. Cheers. This room can get a little nasty sometimes if you get unlucky. Yeah. So what pessimism did there, he, uh, he, uh, backed up and turned and quick turned because if he ran a straight line towards the exit then a parasite would have burst out of the zombie's chest right. <laughs> yeah but we don't want that yeah no the parasites in this game like uh they'll I'm pretty sure they poison you instantly don't they uh i don't think they do they just it's you have to rip them off you smash them on the ground stuff yeah on them. it's a it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty lengthy um like, it's pretty lengthy to oh, escape that animation. That one is but, tricky to get. Yeah. I want to say that there's um, those embryos. What are those what called? The parasites? I, I, just call, I just call them parasites. I want to say they're just like the RE2 uh, parasites that you just got to kind of shake off with like, mm -hmm. the D-pad. Yeah, from G-Mutant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. But they still, they still, they still attack you. They still yes. hit you. Yes. And they can still poison you. I'm pretty sure they're poisonous because they were actually... Uh, Planted in those zombies by the moths. Oh. But the um. But yeah, the uh, parasites erupting from those zombies is uh, proximity based, and. Uh, The hunters here. There was a there was a camera earlier. Um, if you run the uh, right line, then you can actually avoid triggering the hunter spawn. This room is really nasty too. That wasn't too bad. It really push. It really puts your mashing to the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could decapitate with the shotgun, but it's really not worth it. Also, you didn't, uh, Pessimism didn't grab the uh, side pack earlier. The side pack is actually not necessary as Chris yeah, it, either. It, it, it's, a, it's a quality of life uh, item. Right. So if you need it, if, suppose if you needed extra health, then it would, be, it would be worth it. But in the glitched route, since you only have the uh, ammunition that's in your, that's in the, uh, Explosive arrows and the uh, grenade launcher to carry you through the rest of the game. There's really no reason to uh, pick up the rest of the health unless you really, really need it. And if you needed to pick it up, then you wouldn't have to open up the inventory to use it because your inventory would be full and it would just prompt you to go ahead and use it on the spot. So It is very common to get tagged right there. You can generally expect two to three. Although it is completely possible to get no uh, little tags from those things. Right. It's possible like, to get through it without taking a single hit, but otherwise... Common, or, yeah. yeah. But otherwise, the only way to get through them is to uh, shoot them with the uh, dual machine pistols. And just, like, kill them one at a time. It's quite painstaking. We have so, uh, $10 from none other than Joel117. <laughs> hey, oh. this is Joel. Hello to all you on the couch as well. What's up, Joel? What Hello, up? Joel. Oh, that was good. That made up for that little sloppy line. See, I told you guys Joel is a cool dude. Yes, yes, you did, sir. 
Yeah, yeah y'all sleeping on Joel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got the stopless little plan right there on it earlier I was practicing. It was not to be during the run though. Escaping through here though, we're gonna have to shake off the zombies again. Hopefully there's not an insta bite, but as long as you shake them off fast enough. Or oh my god! Actually, oh yeah, no, I, I completely forgot. Coming back through this area, you can actually take a line yeah. because yeah. they're because the zombies are generally like there's generally no aggro, so you can actually get away with uh, mm -hmm. with like sticking and all. moving through those zombies on the way back. That, that line's yeah. so beautiful. Fifty dollars from Door Inspector, donating to one of the best games for inspecting doors. Thanks <laughs> to everyone in GDQ for hosting this great event. Now let's open another door. <laughs> thank yes. you so much for uh, thank you so much for uh, inspecting all of these quality doors. Everyone loves the door simulators. By the way. Um, how many explosive arrows does it take to kill a hunter? Two, I believe. You're... Were you planning on killing the hunter near the uh, near the dragonfly wings, mm -hmm. or...? Kill him with the grenades. Okay. Only takes one with a proper shot. Wow. All right, I already have the right. $150 from B-Myth. Always willing to help Doctors Without Borders. Let's help those doctors out and save those animals. Thanks for that hot 150, B-Myth. Yep. Saving the animals, mm-hmm. Here's a giant arachnid we were talking about earlier. Right. Okay, good. If you get really unlucky, he can trap you right there. He just continuously knocks you down. We're on point with Where all of these he? bend cancels, actually. Oh. Ooh, that was close. I think the hitbox on that one was a little less wide. I think... Do you have iframes when you're climbing objects? Yeah, you do. Okay. I feel that should have hit. Mm, no, it was, it was actually a lot more. It was actually a lot more direct, like in front, than it was. Um, okay. Than it was going to. Uh, going towards the towards the sides, even though like his right legs were moving. Okay. It's just a really quick, direct, front side attack. And that is the end of the sweepers. I shouldn't encounter any more of those guys ever again. So at this point, we have uh, eight grenades left over for, those are going towards Alexia 3, or Alexia 1 and Alexia 2. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna take care, oh, take control of Claire one more time here. not really too terribly much to do with uh, to do with Claire in this segment. It's a very short five minute scenario. With a very dangerous area. But yeah, it's very short like right. Carsey said. So we're coming up on uh, we're coming up on Steve. Steve is uh, notorious for being very fast, dealing a lot of damage and uh, generally being 
unavoidable as far as taking said damage. You must be very quick here, otherwise this thing will crush you. Yeah, and also you don't disable the trap until you pick up the card, so if you miss up that pickup, if you mess up that pickup, then sometimes you'll <coughs> straight up get crushed. But anyway. Turn into a clear sandwich. Yeah. Exactly. Fortunately for this version, like, you get retries. Yeah, the retry is, like, right as soon as you take control of Claire. But, you know, so doesn't waste too terribly much time, I guess, but still quite a bit. So what's going to happen is Steve is going to commit to the attack, and then you're just going to kind of wedge yourself between the chair and uh, Steve. And you're just going to hug. Oh, oh, so close to no damage. That was really close that to no damage. Nice. Fight. And Alexia. Yeah, Alexia is very. That was really good. Yeah. Thank Alexia you, is very, very quick to take down. It only takes three explosive rounds to eliminate Alexia in this phase. She has a lot of area of effect attacks, but obviously we're not going to be seeing very much because all we had to do is just stand there and shoot. Generally, with Resident Evil, with Resident Evil games, there's always one correct solution for each enemy as far as taking them down quickly. And boy, does it happen very fast. There's a lot of tight quarters here, more zombies. <clears throat> Need to grab the biohazard key so that we can get the last two jewels. Hero of time with $50. When I had the time to watch, I didn't have the money to donate. Now that I'm making the money to donate, I don't have time to watch. Why must life be so complicated? <laughs> Supporting how I can regardless, great people for a great cause. Thanks always, GDQ, and love from Japan. Also, Mr. Blonde DVE donates $5 and says, hi. Hello. What's up, Mr. Mr. Blonde? You're both great, by the way. Oh, somehow that like, said no. So speaking of which, Japanese version is uh, faster text scrolling, mm -hmm. which is the primary reason that it is run. Can't believe we forgot to mention that in the beginning. Yeah, well, I mean, it usually usually goes without saying, you know. Yeah, it's big, true, big, true, big right. speed run stream, you know, like it's usually it's usually explained in almost usually explained in almost every game, but generally, if Japanese language is seen, that's why it's for a text scrolling screen, or in some cases, like in Resident Evil Code Veronica, there's. I went through the wrong door. It's okay. I didn't mean to go through that door. Yeah, it's and also um, less damage, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah. Right? It depends depends on the game. And Code Veronica HD, the uh, damage values are the same in both the Japanese and the U.S. versions. Oh, okay. But uh, the U.S. version of Code Veronica HD has just has the Japanese damage values. Um. But uh, the original or like the vanilla U.S. versions of the game on uh, Dreamcast, PS2, and uh, GameCube. Um, I'll have uh, I'll have you taking slightly more damage than average. All your guns and ammo still do the same amount of damage against enemies, and all the pickups are still there. So the difficulty change is uh, very uh, very minor, but it's still there. A lot of times in earlier uh, earlier Japanese games that get localized stateside, they are uh, a little easier in Japan, but significantly more difficult in the US version. A lot of uh, Capcom and Konami games follow this trend because uh, in doing so, in doing so that uh, basically helped to boost sales numbers above rentals because video game rental is uh, was not a uh, thing that was done in Japan. 
I'm not sure if, it, if there was a legal reason behind it or if they just like never opened any rental stores. I think it was illegal, but um, they believe that by making the games harder, when people would rent them, it would encourage people to buy them more. You gotta beat that game. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> they know they they, they they know they know what terror they were they were unleashing upon our kids. $150 from John52. This shout out goes to all the people working behind the scenes making SGDQ run smoothly. Thank you for all the effort and hard work. Yes, thank you guys. True that. Yeah. Like we can't thank you enough, you know? The explosive arrows are, um, significantly quicker for taking out the tentacles than anything else. Just one shot, just one quick shot, and they're out. Otherwise, your next best option would be grenades, but grenade launcher is actually quite slow. Does better damage overall, too. Oh, you're short on grenades. How many does he need? You can kill him in five. Five. You kill him in five, really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 you have enough. But you gotta be really close. I thought it was seven for some reason. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. You gotta give Alexi a big old hug. That's how close you gotta be. You just have to make sure that all of it hits, I guess. Well, yeah, you could use you could use the shotgun as backup in that case. So, what's the name of the game? I'm I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah, but what is the game? I have no idea. You know, we've been playing Resident Evil, but I'm not sure what kind of Resident Evil game it is. It's code something. <laughs> I don't suppose. I don't suppose this is like. It's called my lord. Code yeah, my lord. Yes, my lord. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's called my lord. My lord, you are the game, my lord. So for this part over here, all we have to do is just tag her once with the shotgun. Just any weapon will do. She only has one HP in this phase. And over here, we uh, fire off five grenades. But we have to make sure that all the grenades hit. Oh, we got little. And if not, then we finish her off with okay. the, uh, nice. yeah, okay. Get ready for time. Right, time is coming up. So now we have the uh, gun that deals the final hit against Alexia. When you got 10 seconds, you got this. It's happening. Two. Uh-oh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Time. Time. Woo! All right. Let's uh, hang on a sec. Before we shift, before we shift out, there's a uh, result screen here. Let's actually see what time this is. Sugar's clapping too. <laughs> so we got uh, 142.37. Ah. 142.47. Nice. There we go. That is good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Get hype. Get hype. <laughs> yes, Sugar. He got the time. He did. <laughs> Here I'm doing. Well, that's Code Veronica. I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you to. Uh, GDQ for setting this up, giving me the opportunity to run this. Uh, thank you to my homies in the back with the couch doing support. Thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate all your time. Thank you so much. Cheers.